Today, we're gonna be putting a viral video to the test and seeing what happens if we submerge seashells in a few types of acid. Guys, if you haven't checked out our shop lately, then you are missing out. We have a handful of old project build kits up for sale, including cool builds like the micro crossbow. The crossbow is simple to make and can fire things like matches and sparklers to over 30 feet away. The kit has everything you need and is ready to assemble, so you don't have to worry about spending your time going to the store and picking things up. It's all ready to go for you. If you want to go ahead and get one now, you can check it out in the link below. All right, guys, so there was a video that was sent to us by a few different people, and in it, it showed a seashell that looked quite a bit like this one, and they put it in what they said was a cup of white vinegar. And I think it was that after 24 hours, they just showed they pulled the shell out and it had gone completely clear. The structure was identical. It almost looked like it was made out of glass. It or did. Crystal. It looked like a glass seashell. Um, and so lots of people wanted to see if it was real. Um, I have my doubts personally. I don't think it's going to work, but it did seem pretty interesting. Here's the basic idea. We have a bunch of seashells and we're gonna try a couple things out. We're gonna submerge several of them in different types of acid and we're gonna see what happens if we put some in our foundry. We normally say that bones, teeth, shells, things like that are made out of calcium, but the thing is, is we're actually shortening that. Calcium isn't what these things are made out of. It's calcium carbonate. It's a little bit different. Calcium carbonate reacts, generally speaking, with acid. And so we've got several types of acid, including white vinegar, and we wanna see what these seashells do in the different types of acid, including we are going to take one of these shells, put it in acid, and we're just gonna leave it overnight. We're gonna put a time-lapse camera on it so everyone can see what it does or doesn't do. Well, we do want to try the vinegar, absolutely, but that one is supposed to sit overnight, so we should probably get that one started. We do have a few different types of acid. I wanted to try it the other way, but you said you tested this with a basic. Yes, so acids are on one side of the pH scale from water, which is neutral, and bases are on the other. Acids anything below seven, bases are above. We have done cool stuff with bases before. If you saw our soda can experiment where we submerged it in drain cleaner, that was a very powerful base, and it reacted a lot with the aluminum but I tried it just as an experiment. I left a seashell in some of that same exact drain cleaner for four days and nothing happened to it at all, so. It didn't even change the coloring or anything. No color, no texture, no bubbles, zero reaction. So we're gonna stick with acids for today. Uh, and we've got four types here. We have sulfuric acid, vinegar, which contains acetic acid. Now this is probably 5% acidity. 5% is, is usually what you're going to find in anything you buy for the kitchen. Yep, for cooking, that's as strong as it's usually gonna get. What do you got over here? I've got some nitric acid. This is 70%, so we're gonna be very careful with this one today. And we've got some muriatic acid. Which is a diluted form of hydrochloric acid. Four different types of acid and a whole lot of shells, so I think we should start seeing what they do. So, little seashell here. Just gonna put that down in the bottom. Yep. High start. enough size, we don't really have to worry about being splashed here. Pouring some sulfuric acid down onto it. See what it does. I'm seeing a little bit of bubbling coming off of that shell. It's nothing extreme. Nothing's happening very quickly, but I do see some bubbles, so. Should we just leave it off to the side? And yeah, I'm gonna add in a little bit more so the shell is completely covered. Oh, now it flipped upside down. I guess that's good because acid's gonna get inside it too. Let's go ahead and start with the muriatic and then we'll move on to the nitric. Sounds good. Woo! That's exciting. Go and open up all the doors and windows. I'm very curious as to what it looks like, but we're waiting until we actually have something to pull it out with. Well, the color's leaching out of it. Now, I don't know if that color was a dye in the first place, but... Oh, look at that. It looks like yeah, it has teeth now. The edge where it was thinner has dissolved through, and where it's thicker, it's still there, so it looks kind of like a sawtooth thing now. It just forms so many bubbles up at the top, they get in the way of all the visual. Just keep letting that go for a few minutes. It's reacting quite a bit. Yeah. But we've got more things to try. Let's see what the nitric acid does. All right. Yep, that also reacts cool. fairly well. Oh, smaller, smaller from the side bubbling. Cool. It's just like it has like this spout coming off the top of it. It's interesting that we're getting such different looking bubbles. I don't know if that's the kind of shell or the kind of acid. Can we pick this oh one? Oh my up? gosh. Yeah. It's basically gone. So if you look at this one, that almost looks like what a bird's wing looks like as a, the I, feathers are I coming in. I can't really pick it up because all the ha! pieces just break right off. This looks like little pin feathers now. All right, I'm gonna get some water and some baking soda over here because I want to try and make a skeleton shell. I wanna be able to put it in, get it to the point where I like how it looks and then be able to neutralize it and see if we can actually get one to stay that way. Interesting, all right. Muriatic is what's given us the cool results. So I'm gonna do muriatic again. 
That was impressive. Chemical resistant gloves. Oh no, I let it go too long. Let's see what I got here. Ha! All right, well I did get that skeleton structure that I was going for, but I did lose an entire side of it. Guys, this was maybe five minutes, I think less. This has got a lot of cool patterning on it. Let's see if it does anything to just the color. Ooh. Well, I don't know if it's a bleaching so much as it just dissolved the outer surface, but it did pull some color off. Now, a fun fact about seashells, they usually only open on the right hand side. So if you ever find a shell that's sinisterly open, which means it's on the left hand side, those apparently collectors will just go crazy about. They Shells are just formed this way, kind of like right-handed people, left-handed people. It's more common to find a shell that opens on the right. So while we weren't paying attention, the shell that was in our nitric acid just sort of went away. Hold on. I'm gonna put a new one in there and see. I'll just go ahead and take one of these little guys. Let's try that one more time and we'll actually pay attention. And while that's going, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one. Looks very similar. Drop this into our muriatic. Give that a couple minutes and see what happens. I don't even know where the shell is at this point. What? Whatever's left of it. <gasps> Wait. Kind of skeletonized it. That's so cool. Oh, that is neat. It's like a crown. It is. And those are nearly identical. I want to try and keep one of these that's a little bit more solidified, because that's just cool. And we said we were gonna be paying attention to the one that we put in the nitric acid. It's almost gone. So that's less energetic looking, but it seems to be dissolving the shell more completely. Yep. I wanna put one of our bigger shells into the nitric acid here. So I'm thinking okay. we should take this, pretty sure this was a, some aquatic snail. I'm just gonna put this down into our nitric acid and see what it does. Why is it the foam turning blue? That's um. still smoking. <laughs> It's hot. It is so hot to the touch right now. Huh. But this is so thin now. Like it was thin before, but without even light, you can see my glove right through that. All right, this is not gonna be our time-lapse test, but just because I'm curious, I wanna see if the vinegar has any immediate reaction. Uh, or, you know, our sulfuric acid seems to, like, really not much has happened on that. And I'm a little confused about that, but I, I thought more would happen, but we're gonna see what the vinegar does in terms of short-term reactions. Hmm, not much. <laughs> That's having about the same reaction as our... Uh, Sulfuric acid, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back into our nitric acid, let it complete its journey into being completely dissolved, because that's pretty cool. We've clearly shown that both muriatic acid and nitric acid dissolve these down to pretty much nothing. We're getting very, very mild reactions from our vinegar and our sulfuric acid. Um, but I think what we need to do is set up our time lapses with the vinegar, and I wanted to do two. I want to do one that's like the shell that closely resembles the one in the video, okay. and then another cup that just has a whole bunch of shells in it covered in vinegar, and we can let both of those time lapse, probably 24 hours, see how they're doing tomorrow. Perfect. And then while that time lapse is running, we can also take some of these shells, put them in our foundry, and see what cooking them does to them. Interesting, I like that idea. <laughs> we've got our single little shell, and we've got a whole cup full of shells. We're gonna take our vinegar, set that up, and then just time lapse it to see what this is gonna do over about 24 hours. Let's pop it in the foundry and turn up the heat. Fantastic. All right, we had those shells up to a point where they're glowing orange. It's really hard to sell because it's daylight out here and with the lid off, it's pretty bright inside of our foundry, but they're glowing orange with the lid on. We could see that in through the little holes we've drilled in the lid. And I think that's what we're going for um, at this point. Hopefully they've chemically changed. Now what we just need to do is let them cool down and we can do some tests to see if we've got lime. Guys, we have let our shells cool down and we've let our shells sit in acid overnight. So it's time to see what's become of everything. Okay, so this is one of those on the top, and this is the first thing that I noticed that's so cool. It's actually come apart in layers. So you can see where it started splintering off, and we saw, was that a glaze coat? Now, some of the shells are actually very shiny. This one had sort of that shiny look to it, but now that shiny is just flaking off. 
and you can see the next layer underneath, and it's so fragile in my hand. Here's another one that was just on the top, and it, it sounds like I'm holding paper. It does. Oh, okay. Beautiful little shell. Not anymore. Beautiful shell powder. Really? All right, so we're gonna take this one. We've, we've got a little bit of broken shell down in there. So from what I've researched, cold water doesn't actually react too well with cooked seashells, but hot water should set it off fairly well. So we've got some water on the stove. I'm just gonna try pouring that over this and see what kind of reaction we start to get. Now, if it's done what you want it to do, what should the seashell do? Uh, we, should get should some, we should get some bubbling and some vapors coming off of it as it produces an exothermic reaction. So it should even heat up the water more. It is already gonna be too hot to touch, so I'm not gonna stick my finger in and see if it's getting hotter. Okay. But we'll just keep an eye on it and we should see lots of bubbling if it's doing what we're looking for. Now that seashell is 75 degrees and your water, if it will focus on water, is 170 degrees. 100 degree difference here. It's well, just starting to fall apart. I was gonna say, I'm watching the breakdown on the inside here. Yeah. Something is wow. happening. It's like it's dissolving. Watching, it's like watching a time lapse sped up, <laughs> but in real life. I mean, it's definitely doing something. It is dissolving this poor seashell. It's less bubbling than I was kind of expecting to see. I'm just gonna take some of these shells and grind them up into a fine powder and then add some water. There's less bubbling than I was hoping to see, but it is breaking the shell down quite a bit. And I'm wondering a couple of things. One, I'm wondering if our furnace was hot enough to properly get the reaction we needed. And I'm wondering if this water is hot enough to set off the reaction. Oh, and now we're seeing some bubbling. That's cool. Maybe I had too much water. Okay, there we go. Too much water. Yeah, that's back up to the was, temperature uh, you had it before. Was not doing so great, but just this right amount of water apparently. That's the reaction we were hoping to see. Oh, it smells terrible. Okay, I think at this point we need to check out how our seashells and vinegar are doing. I am very curious about this. Let's see if it actually works or if it's debunked. Hmm. Here's our seashells cups. Do you see a clear seashell? Is there a perfectly clear seashell in there? Hmm, I All have right. some doubts. Just we'll see if we can pour find off. it. See if you hear a clink. Oh, oh no. No seashell. No seashell. If you watch the time lapse, you're gonna see what happened there. It worked exactly the same as it did with some of our acids. It dissolved, but at a slower rate. So. You can't really make a clear seashell. Well, this way, guys, it's just going to dissolve your seashells. Now, I am also pretty interested in how little happened huh. to our larger collection of shells. I think that there's only so much dissolving that the vinegar can do, and it probably did dissolve. In fact, you can see, look at the, yeah. the outside texture of this is sort of layered on this scallop now. Um, it did dissolve the shells a little bit, but there was so much shell in there that I think it just Absolutely. ran out of dissolving power. Well, and some of the shells, when we were putting them in the strong acids, like the color was bleaching off first and very fast. Now this yellow color is actually kind of coming off on my fingertips, but it didn't completely leach it away. It's still there. This is a noticeable change because this was so shiny mm -hmm. and like I'm actually getting like seashell paste. Yes, that's what I got from my this one. Yeah, yeah. So it did start to dissolve it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think it just, we, we overpowered the vinegar. Vinegar is not a very strong acid and we had a lot of shells in there. Disappointing that we don't have a cup full of clear shells though. All right, so in the past you guys have seen us do multiple videos where we actually have dissolved the outside of a chicken egg. And when you do that, you get the, uh, the membrane on the inside, it's kind of squishy, you can make a rubber egg. Well, the eggshell is made out of calcium carbonate. It's exactly what seashells are made out of. So it was kind of no shock to us that we completely dissolved one of our seashells because it's exactly the same stuff, guys. It's gonna dissolve just the same vinegar as an eggshell would. Here's the result of our paste that we made from putting our ground up cooked seashells into water. It's not going to be the sturdiest stuff ever to really make a good cement. We would wanna mix it in with some things like clay dust or sand and a few other composite materials, but it is holding itself together. It's not super strong, I can break it, but it's also not completely cured. Apparently from research, it can actually take months or even years to 100% cure, but it is holding itself together and you could use this as a form of mortar if you wanted to. We've got a bunch of seashells here. Uh, seashells? Seashells. Guys, that's not all. You know we've always got more for you to see. Go ahead and click that box up at the top to check out our latest video, and we'll talk to you in the next one. See you then.